A lot of nice things that, that come out of that. Um, I myself was able to get a, a, a paper out of investigating this. Uh, I called it the Land of Oz, since it was a collaboration, in effect, between O'Hara and Zeilberger. Um, but a number of other people, uh, Ian McDonald wrote about this and, and others. And uh, Art Benjamin, I don't believe, is, is still here. Uh, but Art and, and Jennifer Quinn and, and Jenny's father and, and the fourth author, um, not too long ago, back in 2001, were able to take this result of, of neurons and, and prove a result in, uh, actually, in, in physics, looking at composite fermions. But no talk about Doran's mathematics and my relationship with Doran's mathematics would be complete without some mention of, of alternating sign matrices. And so I'd, I'd like to conclude with just a, a brief overview of that story. And I'm sure it's a story that's known to, to all of you very well. I, I'd like to touch on, on some of the things that, that I see in that that are particularly nice. Um, this began, of course, with David Robbins' conjecture in 1980 uh, about how the number of alternating sign matrices, uh, n by n alternating sign matrices. I particularly like this representation of alternating sign matrices. It's Greg Cooperberg who came up with it. Uh, what we're looking at is a square matrix of zeros, ones, and, and minus ones, so you can view uh, this picture uh, as this jigsaw puzzle as, as such a, a matrix. Uh, the ones and minus ones have to alternate in any row or column, and each row and each column adds up to, to plus one. But this also shows the, uh, the alternating sign matrix as a six vertex model, which is the way that the physicists think of it. Uh, we can view each of these jigsaw pieces as a vertex and there are four uh, directed arrows at each vertex. Two of them are in arrows. And so here, for example, we've got an in arrow from the top and an in arrow from the left. And we've got an out arrow to the right and an out arrow below. It's called the six vertex model because there's six possible configurations, four choose two, at, uh, at, each, of the, at each of the vertices. And if you think of this in terms of your, your four orientations for the zeros, and then the other two pieces, the plus ones uh, that have the in arrows left and right, or the minus ones that have the in arrows top and bottom, it's easy to see that if you want uh, in arrows on the left side and the right side, and out arrows on the bottom and top, once you've placed all of the green jigsaw pieces, the blue jigsaw pieces are uniquely determined. And the basic problem was to count the number of, uh, of n by n alternating sign matrices. And uh, Dave Robbins actually, as, as he explained in an Intelligencer article that he wrote about this problem uh, around 1989-1990, uh, explained that it's very difficult to take just a sequence of numbers and figure out what's going on. It's much easier if you can break it into a two-dimensional array. And so what he did was to take each set of n by n alternating sign matrices and, and subdivide it into n subsets, uh, a n k being the number of n by n alternating sign matrices in which the one in the top row occurs in the kth column. You can't have any minus ones in the top row because you can't have a column that starts with a minus one. But these are the numbers that you get. As, as you look at, at these values of ANK, and he actually succeeded even way back in 1980 in, in calculating these all the way down to the 20th row. And then he looked at the ratios between the entries. Of course, the beautiful thing about the ratios between the entries is if you look diagonally above each ratio, each ratio you get from the one above by adding the numerators and adding the denominators. Well, what that means is that the numerators are sums of binomial coefficients and the denominators are sums of binomial coefficients. And so this became the, the conjecture that that ratio was, was, uh, could be put in, in that form. Once you know what the ratios are, the first entry in each row has to be the sum of the entries in the row above. 
Because if I've got a 1 in the upper left-hand corner of my alternating sign matrix, the rest of that row consists of zeros. The rest of that column consists of zeros. I'm just looking at the number of alternating sign matrices of one smaller size. So once I know the entries in one row, I know the first entry in the next row. If I know all of the ratios, then once I know the first entry in a row, I know the rest of the entries in that row. And so I know the first entry in the next row. So all of the entries in this triangular arrangement are uniquely determined by the initial value, the one up there at the top, and the fact that the ratios are given in this form. And so it's possible then using some simple hypergeometric series identities uh, to find explicit formulas for the a and k, and in particular the number of n by n alternating sign matrices is then this formula that we've seen before, um, this rational product of, of factorials. So there actually are two alternating sign matrix conjectures that Mills, Robinson, Rumsey made. They conjectured this formula for the total number of n by n alternating sign matrices, but sitting behind it was this formula for the ratio. Well, Mills, Robinson, Rumsey wrote to Richard Stanley with their formula, and Richard pointed out that George Andrews had just recently found exactly this formula for counting something different, something called descending plane partitions that fit inside an n by n by n box. And so Mills, Robinson, Rumsey tried to find a one-to-one -one bijection uh, between their alternating sign matrices and, uh, and these, uh, these descending plane partitions, and that is still an open problem. Uh, although people, well, we saw one related talk on that, finding a bijection between the Gog and, and, and Magog triangles. Um, but George's work on descending plane partitions had been inspired by Ian McDonald's conjecture generating function for cyclically symmetric plane partitions. And so that led Mills, Robbins, and Rumsey to consider cyclically symmetric plane partitions and how they might be related to alternating sign matrices. Um, and I particularly like this quote from, from Richard at the time that, uh, that he had reviewed the first edition of Ian McDonald's Symmetric Functions in All Polynomials. This is his review that appeared in the bulletin of the AMS. And he said about McDonald's conjecture, if I had to single out the most interesting open problem in all of enumerative combinatorics, this would be it. Do you still think it was the most interesting open <laughs> problem at the time? <laughs> and the amazing thing is that Mills, Robbins, and Rumsey were interested in this, this problem because they hoped that it would shed light on alternating sign matrices. In fact, it turned out to go in exactly the opposite direction. Rather than the work of George Andrews in descending plane partitions and Ian McDonald on cyclically symmetric plane partitions, giving them insights into how to understand alternating sign matrices, what they figured out about alternating sign matrices gave them insights into these problems. And so in the attempt to find their connection, they actually succeeded in proving McDonald's conjecture. Uh, this would appear in Inventiones in 1982, proof of the McDonald conjecture. It is a beautiful proof. It is really nice. The insights that they got by trying to find this connection really gave them an elegant, not just a proof, but an elegant proof of the McDonald conjecture. Um, 1982, summer of 1982 was a, was a combinatorics, I guess a Lotharingian seminar, was it, Dominique? Uh, no, it was over Well, it was over but I, it may have been within the, the the general framework of the Lotharingian seminars. Not yet. Okay. No, I don't think so. But, uh, but, but Doran, a few years ago, wrote about uh, his experience there. That, that was a very special meeting, and it's one in which Dave Robbins uh, talked about uh, his, his proof of the McDonald conjecture. And I've, I've got to include this quote from Doran's description. Dave's first talk about the MRR proof of McDonald CSPP, <laughs> the cyclically symmetric plane partition conjecture, was so good and it hinted at the intriguing alternating sign matrices 
that Dominique Foata and everyone else begged Dave to give a second 50-minute talk. Uh, that's Doron Zeta. 